What do you mean? Welcome back to the NW Sportscast, guys. It was a rough one today. Mariners go down 5-1 to one against the Boston Red Sox. Uh, Bryce Miller was hit or miss today, and the Mariners' offense was all missed today. So, Drew, let's hear your thoughts on this game. Yeah, my initial thoughts is this offense is not good enough. I mean, yeah. straight up, I know we're only four games into the Ugh. season, but my Lord, so many of the problems that really persisted throughout last year are coming to fruition in 2024 and it's frustrating you can't expect Bryce Miller to be excellent and he wasn't but he didn't have an absolutely terrible outing you know five innings pitched four earned runs six hits and six strikeouts that's a game that you should still be able to win 30 to 50 percent of the time against a Red Sox team like this you know this isn't it's not like three or four runs is you know, you're in the depths of the basement and can't get back up. You know, it's not like your mom threw away the key and you're you're stuck down there all night. No, this is still a chance to win a ball game, but not with the Mariners tonight. Uh, just super disappointing. In the last three games, the Mariners have scored one run in the nine regulation innings that they've been given. And then, yeah, and in game one, of course, then Luis Castillo didn't pitch ball. So, frustrating all around i'm really glad we salvaged a game yesterday because this really could have been one and three or even zero and four uh to start the year which would have been really really awful but yeah my bottom line this is not on bryce miller even though he didn't have a great game i would put this on the offense and, and that's kind of what i have to say on that yeah it's tough obviously when uh yesterday we i know we broke the record for most uh strikeouts in the first three games i'm assuming that i franchise, believe the strikeout franchise, franchise. Yeah, yeah, the French, yeah, yeah, the team record. And I well, believe it would be crazy. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think we struck out what 10 more times today. So my guess is that it's probably another record for you know most strikeouts in the first four games. And oh no, no, don't worry, see. Levi. We traded Jared Kelnick and well, no, yeah, we just... because we wanted to cut down on strikeouts. Okay. Don't worry. Yeah. It'll be no, just fine. You just wait and see. Uh... All right. You know, no, in all through. actuality, it is early in the season. Yeah, so it's I, very early. But just goodness and gracious, guys. I mean, come on. Like, I, I mean, Julio Rodriguez 0 for 4, JP 0 for 3, and Polanco 0 for 4. That's your top three guys. I think my collective 0 for 11. And then, you know, shit. I mean, sorry. I don't know if we're swearing on this channel or not, but Ty France, he gets two hits and, and you still put up a run. I mean, Ty France might get two hits in a whole month once in a while. So I, I'm just. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words when, you know, 80% of the lineup doesn't get a hit. You're not going to beat the A's. And that's just the, that's the reality of things. So if the you want to win the division. If you're like, following the A's, by the way, guess who walked the A's off today? Uh, I, I'm not following the A's. So tell me, Levi. Abraham Toro. Ah, of who course. Is, who and is I'm sure Jared Kelnick probably hit three homers today too. <laughs> <laughs> no, he actually had a pinch hit double, but. Nice. Uh, yeah, no, but. Okay, so so a couple things. So I've been obviously I've been trying to you guys are following the Twitter. We revived the Twitter page and I'm trying to be positive this year because the whole reason I, I took time off was because I was being too negative. You probably should be more negative. More my challenge, listen. my challenge to this year has been every game, win or lose, I'm finding three positives. You want to hear my three positives today, Drew? You know what? I, I would love to. All right. <laughs> This is this is how this is where I had to go. We've got Ty France going two for three. I thought that was a nice positive, good sign. Two for four, yeah, but yeah, two, yeah, sure. But um, you know, even though his OPS is still five eighty or something, his batting average is two eighty five. So good, good start. Uh, Josh Rojas went one for two, so he's hitting five hundred still on the season. Good for him. Yeah, good for him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Colin Snyder, you know, I thought those two innings out of the bullpen were really good. Oh, he only allowed one hit, so. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, Josh Rojas. Now, do I Frank. wish we had more positives? Like that was that was about the only three positives I could think of. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, I I don't know. Mitch, Did you say Mitch? Yeah, his double. Mitch continues to hit, kind of. Yeah, uh, also struck out twice. I thought Zavala played a okay game behind the plate. Like he he's gonna be able to play, you know, a pretty yeah. good defensive catcher. Yeah, he's a good. He he's, he's pretty good back there with the as far as defense. And I thought he called a pretty good game for Miller. In all actuality, I don't think Bryce executed that much. I don't think that's on Zavala. So I mean, I guess you could say that's a positive. Well, okay, but come on, 
it's way too many fastballs. But he, he's not. I, but I mean, Miller wasn't executing on like the fastballs. In, in but the we fourth know, and okay, but we know Miller's not that good when he only throws his fastball. He was looking good in the first inning. He had a what? What? What is he throwing? A splitter, right? I mean, he looked pretty good in the first three innings. And he and was looking fourth, very really good. And then, yeah, you know, he but he left the pitch hanging. But unfortunately, and also that that might not have even happened had uh, had the third base umpire given us a the, the yeah the check swing call, which yeah. yeah I don't know. I mean, it it's hard to blame an entire game on a check swing call, but when the game is that close, it's like. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we were scoring another run if he gave us 20 innings, so I don't really think we were winning this one, to be honest, but yeah, yeah no, that, that was a heartbreaker. When you're in a close 1-1 ball game, you know, middle parts of the game, you know, innings four through seven, and a multi, you know, a home run that scores multiple runs comes in, it's like, ew, it's a killer because it's like, well, I've only scrapped, you know, the Mariners only scrapped one run across in the first four and a half. And now all of a sudden you have to get three to just tie it. It's a back burner. And yeah, the Mariners were not able to come out of the hole today like they did yesterday. And, you know, I, I want to bring back um, yesterday a little bit because what I thought they did in the 10th inning is what I really think that this Mariner team needs to do going forward. You know, they played, you know, they got lucky with a broken bat, sure. But Urias also got unlucky with the really hard uh, hit at the second baseman that ended up getting caught. There was a lot of just small ball, not trying to do too much, just put the bat on ball. And when you put the bat on ball, good things happen. I mean, guys hit 300 when you just put the ball in play. But yeah, if you exactly. strike out, you consistently swing for the fences and you rely on home runs. This is not going to be a recipe for a good offense. When you just just make contact, hit the ball hard, draw your walks when the, the pitcher's given to you, have good base running, and, you know, it's the little things. And if the little things just kind of accumulated, you know, in the second inning, you got one more run. I think they had a chance in the fifth, was it? I mean, they, they had a few chances throughout the game where it's like you just put the ball in play and see what happens. I think they did that last night in the 10th, and that was the reason we won the game. And they needed to do that again today, and, and they were unable to do that. Really disappointed in JP, Julio, and Jorge Polanco today. Polanco continues to look really poor uh, what's your opinions on Polanco and kind of what my small ball mentality is going forward? I agree. I I'm I do not want this team to be a home run first team. Like that's not what we're built of. We don't have a bunch of power hitters. Um, like last year, it kind of worked, but like Urias and Ken Zone should not be swinging for the fences, right? Like that's not their game. Even Rayleigh, I know Rayleigh hit 19 bombs last year. I don't want to see Rayleigh swinging for the fences all the time. Like. Just or JP or Ty. Yeah. Get some singles. Get some doubles. Like, come on. Just get on pace. And, and even Julio. Okay. Julio, love the guy. But, man, I swear that he he really, especially early in the season, all three times, all three of his, his early seasons has not gone super well. I'm not worried about Julio, but it would be nice if he could, if he could show, I don't know, a little more in the early, in the early weeks of the season. So hopefully he gets going. But no, you're right. This it's a small ball mentality. And especially in Seattle, it's April. The marine layer is gonna like there's a couple balls that Polanco has hit that might have been home runs in July, but it's not July. And you could say blame it on the marine layer, but also the Red Sox, they were hitting playing, yeah. fine, and yeah. they also have the marine layer. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And you know, you know, yes, I want Julio to do more like you mentioned, but he did give us a win yesterday, so it can't be too hard yeah. on him right now. It's kind of the offense collectively. I yeah. don't know. It's it's really, really disappointing to see the offense come out this stagnant. It's early, so I'm not gonna overreact. And when all is said and done, we are two and two. So two and two. We're in second place. Exactly. I mean, if today. Astros got swept. So I mean there's there's a lot of good things. Yeah that still came out of this weekend. So in reality, this is not the end of the world. If anything, the Mariners are probably in a better spot today than they were four days ago. Not that, again, not that anything really matters. It's a game, it's a 162 game season, but it does matter a little bit. I mean, hey, if you took a game in April back in, uh, you know, last season, we would have made the playoffs. So, you know, um, yeah, definitely frustrating, but two and two, and now we got a chance to take a couple of games against, a guardian team that is not excellent at all. 
And uh, yeah. is currently undefeated. So let's hold what? our bricks on the not excellent. You think they're excellent? I mean, you can argue. I I mean, no, I don't think I don't think they're excellent. I'm just saying they're they're undefeated. They're undefeated, and we're throwing Emerson Hancock in his fourth MLB start. So and the Yankees oh, not, beat not say, I'm not going to predict so. a loss, but if if we lose tomorrow, I wouldn't be shocked. But Correct. we should, but we should win on Tuesday because we'll have Castillo going against their number five starter. So if we lose on Tuesday, you don't think that guy's? I thought they had Bieber. Bieber should pitch on Wednesday, I think. I thought I listened to the radio broadcast and they said Castillo versus Bieber. I could be wrong. But... Oh well, if that's the case, then it'll be it'll definitely be close. I mean, both of them. I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but yeah. Either yeah, way, well, if it's and by, well, Mackenzie versus Hancock should be. Tristan McKenzie has had a lot of success against us before, so I'm. I'm I'd probably give the edge to the the Guardians in that yeah. uh, in tomorrow's game. But I think we should hopefully win. Either we should definitely win either Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, frustrating. I don't want to see the panic from this team. That's, no, that's one thing it's I really don't want to see. I, I don't want to see some of the problem with what we're saying is play small ball, kind of just put the bat on the ball and see what happens. You get in a scenario where, you know, 0 for 4 turns into 0 for 8, and then 0 for 8 turns in for 1 for 12, and then all of a sudden – you're sitting here, you know, 10 games into April and your batting average is that 080. And then guys get in a, a spot where they feel like they then they do they they want to counteract their uh, negatives by doing too much. And then they dig themselves deeper in the hole. Where when you're hitting three, four hundred like Roas is, I guarantee you Roas is feeling good right now. He's just worrying about putting the bat to the ball and hitting it hard. But if you look at a guy like a Jorge Polanco, Polanco's trying to probably do a little too much. And the problem is he's going to continue trying to do too much until he gets to a spot where he feels comfortable. But it's a perpetual cycle. He's going to continue doing too much to get himself out of this hole he's dig himself to start the season. And he's going to continue digging himself this hole. What I need to see Polanco do, and I'm picking on Polanco because he's an obvious example, but there's a bunch of different guys that have to do this. They need to take a step back, reevaluate the strike zone, if there's a 3-1 count and the ball is outside, take your walk. You don't need to swing for the fences in that scenario. And, and just put the bat on the ball. And that's what I need to see this Mariner offense do. And I think we'll be all right. Yeah, I agree. I want to do really quickly a, a couple of just opening weekend overreactions with you, Drew. So okay, overreaction number one. And you're going to tell me, is it an overreaction or is it not an overreaction, right? Like, right. like what ESPN might do. So we got uh first overreaction, Drew. We are ESPN, so Lu- Luis Urias will not make it with the Mariners past June first. What an overreaction by like I don't know if you're making these or is this just no, like No, these are off of Twitter. These are off of Twitter. I'm not overreacting at all. Oh, I, I know you're I not never a... overreact. <laughs> you're not an Urias fan. I would not be surprised <laughs> if uh this thumbnail had Urias with a pumpkin on, uh, pumpkin heads. <laughs> uh, Throw back to Gino Smith being a uh, pumpkin. No, that's it's such an overreaction. I mean, Urias didn't even play today. Yesterday, he hit the ball really hard a couple of times, and uh, you know he's an okay third baseman. And from what I've seen from Urias, has been about what I've expected. I thought he's gone unlucky a couple of times. I think he'll be on this team this whole year, and I think Roas will probably take the starting job. But I think they're going to go back and forth, 60% Roas, 40% Urias, pretty much the whole year. I- I'm not on the bringing guys from AAA for third base uh, train like you're on. So I All think right. it's an overreaction. Overreaction, Drew. Overreaction number two. Samad Taylor will be called up to replace Dominic Canzone within the month. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I, again, Taylor, who homer today in triple another Oakland. overreaction. But if you didn't put the stipulation of over a month, I, I then I would probably say that's appropriate. I, I don't think Enzone is looking good at all. And Samad Taylor, this is a guy that's already played in the big leagues. Like this would not be crazy at all. You know, I could see potentially Canzone and him staying on the roster somehow if you figure something out there. I'm not exactly sure how you would do that, but. Yeah, no, I, I would say this month overreaction in the future to be determined, but I'd probably lean appropriate. All right, overreaction number three. We got two more. Overreaction number three, Mitch Garver. He's currently averaging one game played out of four. Will he play more than 50 games this year? 
So I guess it's so what's the what's the take? He'll I guess the, the, the overreaction is that he will not. Okay, so it's an overreaction again. So I guess I'm just I'm a really stagnant fan, you know. Don't overreact at all over here. No, I, I predicted him to play 99 games in my Mitch Garver player preview, and I'm still there. I 99 is about where I think he'll be at. Look, he's not going to play every game, but back spasms are not like some season-ending shoulder injury either. So, uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunate, sure. Should he be back in the lineup tomorrow? Probably. But is it Mitch Garver? Yes. So if he's not really back knows? in the lineup by tomorrow, I'm going to start to have some questions. <laughs> like, is it just back spasms? Or... <laughs> right, right. Like, or... I- I'm willing to buy that, okay, like three days of back spasms, sure, but once it gets like day four or yeah. five, then it's like, okay, what are they not telling us? Like, I'm with you. Like, I, I'm willing to buy, okay, he woke up one day, back spasms, next day is not feeling well. And then, you know, it's an early game on Sunday and, you know, right. just trying to take it off. But then it's like, you have a whole afternoon Sunday and tomorrow and then still, it's, yeah, I'm with you. All right, final overreaction. I'm interested to see what you have of this one. The 2024 Seattle Mariners will strike out more than the 2023 Seattle Mariners over the full season. Oh, wow. A lot closer than I would have thought five days ago. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to go with overreaction. I think all these take so far overreactions. Our lineup did get a little less striker dependent. We got rid of Kelnick. We got rid of Suarez who struck out, struck out what, the most in the league? I think that yeah. was the Suarez, I believe, led the league last year. So say Oscar Hernandez was up there. I think like top 10. Like he was up there, up there. Um, but yeah, no, we replaced those guys with guys that still strike out, which is kind of a catch 22. Like, you know, Hanniger will still have his fair strikeouts, his fair share of strikeouts, Sol Polanco and and uh Canzone. you know, yeah, Canzone will continue to have his strikeouts. But no, I think that's an overreaction for right now. This is somewhat of a fluke i think over the first four games the level we're striking out at uh, i think we're still going to probably be in the top 10 teams with strikeouts and i think that's probably more so just like a mariner ideology also where it's kind of like i don't know what's going on in the pacific northwest but it seems like the 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 mindset is kind of swing a little too hard for my liking and i think we're going to still strike out a lot not as much as last year all right and 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 you know What's funny, Drew, is I agree with all of you. I, I agree here with all four. I wow. think those are all overreactions. Um, so I would say, <laughs> I would say the closest, the honestly, the closest one that I'm at to saying is not an overreaction is the Mitch Garver, just because really the track I, I like record, this Taylor. the track record that that guy has had has been so unlucky that I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he only plays 30 games for us this year. Um, as well as our track record with backup catchers, like every single season, Tom Murphy got hurt for us. Like it just, it feels like we always have our backup catchers getting hurt. So I don't know if it's the thing with the Mariners and with him, but I still right now, like it's an overreaction. And that's the thing, like the first weekend, there, it's hard to really draw a conclusion from opening weekend. Weird things happen opening weekend. Like the Red Sox are not a good pitching staff and we made them look like aces. My guess is that our offense will get better and their pitching staff will not end up being this good. And we're going to all forget that this series happened by May, but it's this game was still not very fun to watch. Yeah, it's impossible to draw conclusions from opening day, in my opinion. So yeah. I agree with you. Um, my last thing, Levi, the Samad Taylor, I, I would say I would think that that would be the one that you would think is not an overreaction. But no, you, you think Ken Zone is going to live some life on this roster, at least through this month? I don't know, man. It's hard to – so Ken Zone does have minor league options, I think. So if we did want to send him down, we we could do that. Um, but I think part of it also is, I mean, they want to justify, like, look, we traded Paul Seawald for a reason. They're going to give him a chance. Like, they're not just going to give up on Ken Zone because then you're admitting, like, yeah, we traded Seawald and, you know – one of the players we got back turns out to be a bum. Like, no, they, they don't want him to be a bum or else that looks bad as far as the trade. So I don't think, yeah, I think Canzone, because of that, he has a longer leash. Um, Whereas like somebody who like Luis Urias, I don't think Urias had that long of a leash because for him, it's like, ah, uh, we traded a random reliever who nobody really even knew. So they can get rid of Urias and no one's going to bat an eye. But if they, 
DFA can zone after a month, it's like, wow, you really you like that that's when questions so I, I think he has a longer leash. Yeah. How about the whole year? <laughs> I mean the whole year, who knows? It's hard okay. to I, I, well, hey, I'll tell you what. If uh, if the Mariners' offense keeps struggling like this, I got a guy who's available for you who, you, who we can sign off the streets for for dirt cheap. Tell me, Shoot Mike it. Ford. Hey, not a bad take. <laughs> Mike Ford didn't make the Reds roster, so he's a he's a free agent. Put him on the Rangers for a little bit, and then he'll hit four hundred, and we'll probably have to call him up at some point. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, all right, you got anything else, Drew? No, yeah, we've kind of strayed away from the whole uh, post game thing. I'm yeah. <laughs> just talking M's. But if you guys like this, let us know down below in the comments. I mean, Levi, I like talking regardless. So uh, if you want to listen, that's great. If you don't, uh, stay anyway. So yeah. <laughs> thanks. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help us out. I um, appreciate some of the, you know, not huge numbers tomorrow's um, post game, but, you know, 60 or so views so it's good to see uh, some people at least watching and, and really from the bottom of my heart and i'm sure levi's too it does mean a lot i mean we've been on this grind for like actually years now and and, and to be fair we've been off and on and we were like 14 when we started so um there's only so much we can really do but you know i really at least for me i'll speak for myself it really does mean a lot so just thank you guys um we're gonna continue grinding and hopefully you guys stay and watch the journey as it unfolds and kind of follow us as we follow the Mariners. Um, yeah, it means a lot. So please give us a like, comment, subscribe. And uh, yeah, that's about it for me. Yeah, I would, I would echo those points. And as always, guys, go Mariners and back at them tomorrow. Hopefully we can get on the right track offensively. So we'll see you guys yep. in tomorrow's video and uh, have, have a happy Easter, everybody. See you guys.